This is the reading section of the IBID TOEFL test. As it says here, the first section on the IBID TOEFL test is the reading section. This section consists of three passages, each followed by a number of questions. All of the questions accompany a passage are worth one point each, except for the last question in the set, which is worth more than one point. You have 20 minutes to complete the first paragraph and 40 uh, minutes to complete the second and third paragraph. The passages are lengthy readings, 600 to 700 words each, on academic topics. The question may ask about vocabulary, uh, pronoun reference, the meaning of sentences, where sentences can be inserted, stated, and unstated detail, inferences, rhetorical purpose, and overall organization of ideas. The following is strategies for reading. In other words, if you follow these directions, it will help you to do better on the test and give you more time uh, to uh, answer the questions. And I'm going to show through them and then I'll read them to you. Be familiar with the directions. The directions on every test are the same. So it is not necessary to spend time reading the directions carefully when you take the test. You should be completely familiar with the directions before the day of the test, and that means you should do some that type of study before you take the test. Two, to miss, dismiss the directions as soon as they come up. You should already be familiar with the directions, so you can click on continue. As you can see here, as soon as that appears, and use your time on the passage and questions. Number three, do not worry if a reading passage is on a topic that is not familiar to you. All the information that you need to answer the questions is included in the passages. Do not, you do not need any background knowledge to answer the questions. Number four, do not spend too much time reading the passages. You do not have time to read each passage in depth, and it's quite possible to answer the questions correctly without first reading the passage in depth. Number five, skim each passage to determine the main idea and overall organization of ideas in the passage. Skim means to quickly look over the page. You do not need to understand every detail in each passage to answer the questions correctly. It is therefore a waste of time to read each passage with the intent of understanding every single detail before you try to answer the questions. Number six, look at each question to determine what type of question it is. The type of question tells you how to proceed to answer the questions. For example, for vocabulary questions, the target word will be highlighted in the passage. Find the highlighted word and read the content around it. For reference questions, the target word will be highlighted in the passage Find the target word and read the context preceding the highlighted word. For sentences, sentence insertion questions, there will be a darkened square indicating where the sentence might be inserted. Read the context around the darkened square carefully. For sentences, for the sentence restatement questions, the target 
The targeted sentence will be highlighted in the passage. Read the highlighted sentence carefully. It may also be helpful to read the context around the highlighted sentence. For detail questions, unstated detail questions, and inference questions, choose a keyword in the question and skim. Remember, quickly go over, not reading every word, skim for the keyword or related idea. In order, in the passage, read the part of the passage around the keyword or related idea. For rhetorical purpose questions, the targeted word or phrase will be highlighted in the passage. Read the highlighted word or phrase and the content around it to determine the rhetorical purpose. For overall idea questions, focus on the main ideas rather than details of the passage. The main ideas are most likely explained in the introductory paragraph and at the beginning or end of each supporting paragraph. Number seven here, choose the best answer to each question. You may be certain of particular answers or you may eliminate any definitely incorrect answer and choose from among the remaining answers. Number eight, do not spend too much time on a question you are completely unsure, unsure of. If you do not know the answer to a question, simply guess and go on. You can return to this question later while you're still working on the same paragraph if you have time. Number nine, monitor the time carefully on the title bar of the computer screen. The title bar indicates the time remaining in the section. The total number of questions in the section and the number of the questions that you are working on. Number 10, guess to complete, guess to complete the section before time is up. It can only increase your score to guess the answers to questions then you do not have time to complete. Points are not subtracted for incorrect answers. These are the reading skills. There are several areas in which you will be quizzed on. So, so reading skill number one, understand vocabulary from the context. Meaning this will be what you'll be asked on the question, so it's called reading skills. If you do this before time, and you study and prepare, this is reading skill number one. In the reading skills section of the IBIT TOEFL test, you may be asked to determine the meaning of a word or phrase. It may be difficult word or phrase that you have never seen before, or it may be an easier looking word or phrase that has a number of varied meanings. In any uh, of these cases, the passage will probably give you a clear indication of what the word or phrase means. Look at an example of a difficult word that perhaps you have never seen before in this example. The context helps you to understand the meaning. Okay, in this example, we have uh, a an article on the moho. And it's asking you over, this is very much like the screen that you will encounter. So it's good to familiarize yourself with this. So the question over here is the word encompasses in the paragraph one is closes and meaning to, and then it gives you the four choices. Well, if we take the advice we go over and we go around the word here and we read about it. it, it this is called, it, it is the mantle. Uh, it's a, a region of the earth that extends from the outer edge of the core almost to the surface. And here we have, you know, the clue in the sentence. 
It is 2,900 kilometers thick and encompasses about 84% of the total volume of the Earth. Okay, we have some very uh, crew-type words. If you read this correctly, I'll move this down. The questions asked about the meaning of the word encompasses. In this question, you are not expected to know the meaning of this word. Instead, you should see in the context that the mantle is 2,900 kilometers thick and encompasses about 84% of the total volume of the Earth, and you see the underlying line here. This is the information around the word. From this context, you can determine that encompass is closest in meaning to contains, okay? Because we're talking about, we're here we're talking about volume, we're talking about it, say 84%. So if something is volume, it has to contain something. So the word would be contains. And you can get that meaning from uh, that which is around the word itself. Now next, look at the example of the word you often see in everyday English. In this type, a question you should not give the normal everyday meaning of the word. Instead, a secondary meaning is being tested. So you must study the context uh, to determine the meaning of the word. Here we have, it's still on Mahal, but they want the meaning of the word of draw. In paragraph two, they tell you, you go to paragraph two, you see draw is shaded, and then you read the context around it. Re using the reflection of uh, seismic waves at thousands of different locations, scientists have been able to draw some interesting conclusions. Okay? Conclusions should be a clue to you, and the fact that um, that in order to come to some interesting conclusion, you need to do some reasoning, you need to do some searching, uh, you need to come to some conclusion. Okay, in this type, you should understand that draw is a normal everyday word, right? And it's being used in its normal everyday way. The question of this type of question, you must see which answer best fits into the context and the passage. Does that make sense to talk about being able to sketch, being able to pull or graph some interesting conclusion? But it does make sense to say, to make some interesting conclusion. This answers that question. Sonny, look at the example of phrases that perhaps you do not know. In this example, the context again helps you to understand the meaning of the unknown phrase. The phrase, to a considerable degree, you see right here. And the second pa uh, paragraph uh, is closer to the meaning. And as you see, they, they have given you the answers because this is supposed to be an exercise. But if we look down here, we to a considerable degree, you, you say grandly, significantly, geometrically, and considerately. By, by a process of elimination, you will come to the conclusion of significance. Okay, the moho varies to a considerable degree in depth, okay? The question asked about the meaning of the phrase to a considerable degree. In this question, you are again expected to determine from the context what the phrase means. The passage states that the moho varies to a considerable degree in depth. From this context, you can determine that to a considerable degree is closest to the meaning of significantly.
to help you in answering these questions, uh, we have a chart here that uh, outlines the key information you should remember about questions testing vocabulary and context. There are certain clues. How to identify the question. The word or phrase is closest in meaning to, or it will say the word or phrase could best be replaced by. These are uh, vocabulary contextual questions, and it should be a clue for you. Where to find the answer? Information to help you understand the meaning of an unknown word or phrase can often be found in the context surrounding the word or phrase. How to answer the question? Okay, number one, find the word or phrase in the passage. Number two, read the sentences or the sentence that contains the word or phrase carefully. Three, look for context clues to help you to understand the meaning. And finally, four, choose the answer that the context indicates. That which you logically conclude is the closest to the meaning of this. Finally, here is an exercise whereby you can go through uh, as a practice on this. Uh, I can't show you it all at one time. Uh, we can, uh, I can give you a section and another section. And you need to stop the video at this point and go through this uh, to get to know the understanding uh, of the word, okay? Uh, for example, oxidation of exhaust gas is one of the primary sources, sources of the world world pollution. The brown haze that is poised over some of the world's largest cities is properly called photochemical smog. Okay, remember we're going to be reading what's in the sentence to get the meaning of this vocabulary word and the clue is the brown haze that is poised over some of the world, over something, means that it's above something. That should give you a clue to the meaning of the word. Okay? So we look down here to poise. We find uh, these words, these answers. Interacting, sitting, blowing, poisoning. Okay. And interacting means it has to be combining with something. Poisoning means, you know, it has to be killing something. Blowing means it has to essentially be moving around. But sitting is one word that's left here, and sitting is the word, to the answer to that, because if something is poised over something, it's sitting over it. It's hanging above it. So, sitting is the answer to that question, okay? Here you have the remaining questions. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to handle this, but you, you can maybe uh, move the screen back and forth uh, to get these uh, questions and answers and how to answer. I'll figure out something in the future. Uh, I guess one thing I can do, you could request uh, this particular exercise and I could send you a PDF of it. Okay? So this uh, ends this part of uh, preparation for the TOEFL test. Uh, the reading section is quite large. There's many other sections and many other skills I need to go through. So I would do that in a future lessons.